is March into Madness on CBS 5. Brought to you by your Central New York Chevy dealers. CNYChevy.com. And by Mark's Pizzeria. Do we love oh, that my, music? My foot is tapping the it, it really gets you in the mood. And good evening once again, everyone. I'm Michael Benny, joined tonight by my buddies Matt Mulcahy and Nico Tamurian. And here we go again. March Madness for the Orange. It starts tomorrow afternoon, but covering and following this program has been nothing short of madness for months yeah, now. Yeah, there's been nothing like this season. There's mm -hmm. been drama for the entire season, and the most recent chapter in SU's controversial yet record-breaking season is Fab Mello's ineligibility. Yeah, that's right, Matt. Coach Jim Beheim and the players had to answer questions in Pittsburgh today about Fab Mello being out for the duration of the NCAA tournament. There are conflicting reports over whether the decision, whether he could play or not, came from SU or the NCAA, but the fact remains, He's out for the tournament. Mello, of course, a rocky two years since he first arrived on the scene here in Syracuse. The Brazilian seven foot tall high school All-American was a huge contributor on the team in his second season. He was named Big East Defensive Player of the Year, but he also dealt with some legal issues off the court. We are well aware of that and that suspension back in January for academic reasons. And during the suspension, Syracuse lost its only game of the regular season. Now for more on the biggest story really in all of college basketball the last couple of days leading up to the games actually being played this week, we turn to John Evanson who's live in Pittsburgh where John looks like a, a nice night but a, a tough news conference this afternoon for the coach and the players. Yeah, it, is. it almost feels like summer out here in Pittsburgh. And yeah, as I, as I stand in front of the Console Energy Arena here on Wednesday night, completely different plot line, as you guys have been talking about for SU, than we had on Sunday night when it was announced they'd be playing UNC Asheville in that first game of the NCAA tournament. No Fab Mello has just taken over the headlines across college basketball, really. And I've covered this uh, tournament for a number of years now, and i got to tell you, I've never felt the vibe that I felt when I locked, walked into the orange locker room today. The only way I could really describe it is shell-shocked. All the players just seemed stunned. It didn't really seem like the locker room of a number one seed. That is for sure. They found out Fab Mello wasn't coming when they were getting on the bus to head to the airport yesterday, and it really began to sink in when they hit the shoot-around today. They hit the hardwood here behind me, and they looked around. No seven-footer. The Orange with a more intense shoot-around than you'd normally see at the NCAA tournament today. Defensive drills, the most intense, and suddenly the weight of Orange Nation on centers by Keita and Rakeem Christmas needing to fill the void for Fab Mello. Last year I was put in the same position, so you know when Fab was out for a couple couple of games, so I was starting with the. Last year was kind of an experience for me because I started with the broken hand, and like and sprained ligaments, all these things was going around. So you know coming out to this tournament, I have the experience. As a group, they should be able to do what Fab done. You know, um, Fab moving his feet well. I mean, uh, by moving his feet well, he could, he could create a lot of charges. Um, you know, if if Rock just being a first year player, but it's been a long season. You know, he's getting better every day. The Orange locker room felt a little bit more shell shocked than we're used to seeing the day before an NCAA tournament game, trying to come to grips with the fact that they'll be playing without the Big East Defensive Player of the Year. When you hear it, you know, it's it kind of sad that you know we had a great season, and it's fortunate he can't be here to play with us in the tournament where, where it matters at. And, uh, you know, things like that. You just got you got to man up and you you got to come on and play. And he feel like he let us down, but he did. You know we still sticking by our side no matter what. And wish we could have him here, but we just have to go on. You know we can't dwell on it now because you lose you out. You know so for the most part for myself, you know to bring motivation, motivate, motiv motivate the team as much as I can as far as believing ourselves. And we've been here before. We didn't get here by accident, and that's the biggest thing for us right now. But the cut to the core question today was: Can this team still win? A 
national championship. You know, it, it don't matter who we lose, we, we still feel that we're capable of, you know, winning games and winning, ultimately winning six games. We got a lot to accomplish. Like, we're not done yet. You know, regular season, all that type of stuff is over. You know, it's 0-0 zero, zero now, so we just got to be ready to go, man. Uh, you know, they're saying all the right things, but uh, you can certainly, even on Dion's uh, face there, the demeanor is, is obvious. This is hitting them pretty hard. Well, absolutely. I mean, just a, such a huge adjustment. I mean, as he was a number one seed, losing the Big East Defensive Player of the Year, probably not an ordinary number one seed situation, but I'll tell you, their opponent, UNC Asheville, they are far from a typical 16 seed. <laughs> UNC Asheville is the fifth highest scoring team in Division I basketball and starts four seniors. They don't have a lot of height, but that hasn't stopped them all season. We don't let our size hinder us because, I mean, we're 6'3 and 6'4 and 6'5 and we still manage to get rebounds and out-rebound other teams, so we're not going to let our size get in the way of what we want to do. Asheville played close games against both NC State and UConn earlier in the season, and players say they learned a lot from playing against those big-time programs. You know, we have some pretty athletic guys, um, you know, 6'5", 6'6". Six, six. You know, we're not big, but they're pretty athletic, you know, and they can jump with the best of them. Asheville starters spent a lot of their practice working against a recreation of Syracuse's zone, and Orange fans should keep an eye on Matt Dickey. He's a senior, the Big South Player of the Year, and will likely be playing professionally somewhere next year. Uh, you know, we're going to try to get out and run on offense, but one of our keys has been we got to stop them in transition. We cannot let them get out and run and, uh, you know, get long rebounds or get turnovers. Is what, is, that's how they start their offense. And after UNC Asheville played UConn earlier this season, UConn guard Jeremy Lamb told J.P. Prim that UNC Asheville was the scrappiest team they had played so far this season. So this, is, this could be a challenge for the Orange. And this they, is a good team. They had a second celebration when they found out via Twitter that Fab Mello wasn't going to be playing in this game, guys. And Alex, a question I have for you, though, is you, we heard the players all saying the right things, yeah. but do you, did you really buy into what they're saying? Do, do they really believe that not having Fab Mello doesn't make a difference? Uh, you could see in their eyes that they're very, very, very disappointed. They told me that Fab Mello uh, spoke to them uh, in the locker room just as they were leaving. He apologized. I asked them a number of times uh, if they were upset at Fab Mello. No one would own, uh, own to that. But when I asked the question, you could, you could just see the look in their eyes that overall, yeah, they are very disappointed in this whole scenario. And it's going to take um, a little bit to get their spirits up in this 48 hours to try to get mentally ready to play in, in what is really a, a tough game as we saw from Alex's package. All right, John Evanson and Alex Dunbar live in Pittsburgh. We'll be back with you guys. Thank you. And as we continue on the blocks, Brent Axe is here in the studio to talk more about Asheville and we'll definitely talk more about <laughs> Fab Mello as well. Yeah, it's the topic of the week. Yeah. We want you to be part of that conversation too as you have been on social media for the last day now. Tweet us your questions and your comments at cnycentral.com hashtag March into Madness. Also Facebook too. But before that, let's take a look at SU's tournament, how the bracket plays out. If they beat UNC Asheville tomorrow, they will play either the 8 seed Kansas State or the 9 seed Southern Mississippi on Saturday. Kansas State, a very good rebounding team. Certainly that's an area where the Orange struggled this year with Fab in the lineup. Southern Mississippi won 25 games in a pretty good conference USA this year as well. Potential Sweet 16 opponents include Wisconsin, Harvard, Montana, or a very dangerous Vanderbilt team. Nico, thanks for schooling us. More ahead here on CBS 5 on the blocks. Brent Axe is in in just a few minutes when our March into Madness returns. Welcome back to March into Madness on CBS 5. Well, if you're driving by uh, Rosie's Bar last night in Syracuse near Tipperary Hill, you might have seen this in the fading light. Honk if you're mad at Mello. Great, oh, way, to, great way to take out some frustrations. Uh, we didn't get an official count of how many honks there were. <laughs> but I tell you this, if that sign had been posted, say, 2, 2.15 2 in the afternoon yesterday, there would have been some major honkage going on. Mm, uh, people, because people were hot. Yeah, I'm was, glad I didn't drive by Rosie's last night. Uh, yeah, so, that. yeah what would, so what would you have done? I mean, honk if you're, if you're mad at Mello, I mean, look, everybody's frustrated that this is going on, and you know, but uh, you know, I, I think there's a line there, Matt. 
and I think somebody drove by that line at about 100 miles per hour. <laughs> yeah. You know what, you know what I love about that? And they're honking while they're driving uh, by the line. You know what yeah, I love about basketball. Brent Axe is that he starts the, his own interview yeah. for the people who were supposed to be interviewing That's Brent right. Axe of On the Block. He's on 1260 The Score, uh, an afternoon radio show that simulcasts on Time Warner Cable Sports, and we're lucky to have you here. Let's start by talking about Fab Mello, sure. and let's talk about what those players said today. We heard them in the news conference. We heard them uh, very, very buttoned up is the way that I would describe it about them. They said all the right things. They, they, they can't know. To, they, they can't right. know yet well, how they're going to react. Here's the thing. Yeah, right. they've, they've had a lot of practice at saying all the right things this year because they've gone it's through true. so much. True. Now, here's the difference. This is on the court. You can't get away from this. All the other things this team has gone through this year, guys, their sanctuary has been that court. Yeah. You're going to get on that court. It's hard to not notice the absence of a 7-foot, 244-pound center in Fab Mello. So oh, is that all? They kind of went through the motions of talking about yeah, we got to move on and we've got to play without them and, you know, all the same stuff you hear this time of year. But this is directly related on the court. They can't deflect this off like they have in the past. And one thing I think Coach Jim Beheim and his staff are very good at, though, is making every game experience identical to the one before. Yes. You know, so even the home games when they stay at the hotel and all, all that, that's all designed for moments like this. So it just feels like, oh, it's just another game. In a way, but this is the NCAA tournament. Right. You've got different media there. you got a different circumstance. We know what's on the line here. So at least... You know, look, there is not a team that's more prepared to handle adversity or anything you can throw at these guys. I mean, you could have told Jim Beheim that Godzilla walked through that press conference today and he wouldn't have batted an eyelash. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. all that training... For fear of being sued for defamation, <laughs> right. potentially. It's well, all got to pay off now. Well, yeah, moves to the next question, Brent. You know, obviously, Fab not in the starting lineup. Who takes his spot? Is it Rakeem Christmas by Kida? Even James Sutherland, potentially, if you it's, go small? It's Rakeem Kida. It's by Christmas. It's a combination there of you the go. two. And, you know... Uh, we were talking about this. Let's say you run into an Ohio State down the road here. Well, that's 10 fouls that you've got to throw at Jared mm -hmm. Sollinger. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, no one replaces Fab in terms of this guy does his job. On a very deep team, he's the most indispensable player there because of what he does and the presence he brings in the middle. And it's how he anchors that zone, Nico. By what he does in that zone, it allows the people ahead of him to be more aggressive, take chances. Because, oh, hey, we got this big fella back right. here in case we miss. That's gone now. So it, it is a combination of those three and everybody else. It also seems like against a smaller team like UNC Nashville, right. you're going to see Sutherland with Fair in there maybe, or three guards, which we saw a little bit in the Big East. That was interesting right? to hear Beheim say that today, Matt, that, you know, be prepared for anything. He said we could go three guards. He did not, you know, downplay anything with this team. And this is a guy who says himself all the time that he does things the same way. So I think it'd be smart to do that. I think it'd be smart to be open to press more on defense. You do what you do. You got here for a reason. Fab Mello doesn't blow this whole thing up, but you do have to go outside the box a little bit once you get further down the road. You know far more about this than probably a lot of people who are watching right now. I want to know what's on that bracket. It's <laughs> on this bracket right here. You got Kentucky. That, 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 that was confidential until just a little while. Well, ago, thanks, wasn't Michael. It? You know, I'll just tell everybody. Listen, so don't, everybody don't can win their it, office. Don't bring it to the program unless you're willing to share with the, the whole winners class. right here. Here's my final four. I've got Kentucky, Michigan State, mm -hmm. Kansas, mm -hmm. and. I still have Syracuse in the Good final. for you. I still Good think they're going to get there. And I'm glad I you love asked, it. Michael. I had a statistical analysis guy, numbers guy, on my show today. And the two big upsets that I picked, Texas over Cincinnati, Belmont over Georgetown. I like the Belmont one. The two most statistically possible big upsets in the tournament. So wow. if you don't believe me, believe the numbers guy. Come the on. numbers do not lie. But uh, you it's really think Syracuse science. can still get there? I do. I, I don't, I, I you're not just saying that because you're no. from here. You're, you like the orange. Look, the road gets a lot tougher now, but they still can get to the Final Four. They're deep. They're talented. They can beat the teams in front of them here. I'll say this, though. They better avoid Wisconsin at all costs. That's mm. the team that can knock Yes or no, if they do win it all, if they do win it all, does Jim Beheim retire right afterwards? No. No. Thank you, Brent Axe. Definitively no. Thank you, Brent Axe. We'll take a look at the afternoon games in Syracuse's bracket. You heard it here first, folks. Kansas State and Southern Miss, that's 1240. The winner going on to play Syracuse or UNC Asheville. Of course, we all think it's going to be Syracuse. Wisconsin and Montana battling at 210 on TNT. Vanderbilt and Harvard go at it, also on TNT at 430. Then there is Syracuse, third on the list, approximately 3 o'clock, 310, a tip-off on True TV. And we have Details on where you can find True TV on your cable box coming up a little bit later in the program. Much more still to come. We'll go back to Pittsburgh for more on SU's big matchup tomorrow as we march into madness. It continues here on CBS 5.
I really mm -hmm. thought the party was... Welcome back to CBS 5's March into Madness as Syracuse prepares to take on UNC Asheville tomorrow afternoon, just after 3 o'clock on True TV. You have to have a Harvard degree to find the games this year. <laughs> That's a good all, I mean, or Vanderbilt. Oh, yeah, very well said. Even One of the that? players that everyone's looking to step up his game tomorrow afternoon in Mello's absence will certainly be by Keita. Sports director John Evanson spoke one on one with Keita this afternoon about Fab and looking ahead to tomorrow's contest. So I'm uh, joined here by uh, by Kita, who, of course, uh, your minutes will obviously uh, go up with uh, Fab not in the lineup. Uh, are, you, are you ready for this? Yeah, you know, I've been ready all year round. So, like, every game we play, you know, I've been ready for it. So, you know, I've been to this position in last year, so but I'm ready for it. Is there some blame going on here? No, you know, you, you know, everyone, you know, that was kind of surprising the first time we heard it after practice, so, like, yesterday before we come here. And everybody, everybody would know he wanted to be with us, so we talk about it. He really wanted bad to be here so like he couldn't he couldn't, couldn't couldn't make it so I know that was yes the reaction and today you know we, we had already had practice and coming to the second one all of us you know kind of forget about it and moving forward because we know we, get, we have to step up and play our best I know he talked to the team uh, before uh, you guys left uh, what, what did he say you know he said you know you got I can't make it with you guys but just you know get ready so you know, he, he wanted to be with us, so he can now make it. So we just need to play, like I say, our best. Are you concerned a little bit about, you know, the, the minutes that you've gotten in some of these games that maybe you don't have enough game experience heading into to this one? Or, or do you think uh, you'll you'll have plenty to go around just from experience and practice in last year and, and in the NCAA? Yeah, you know, you know, the minutes doesn't want to matter. You know, everything is dependent on experience. You know, going with the team on the road, playing on top places. And, you know, the experience that I have last year would help me, you know, going to help me to, you know, come to this time and be ready for play. Have you and Rakeem sort of talked together about sort of this extra responsibility that you guys have now? No, you know, we, we, we you know, we all put on the same, same thing when we play, like, on the road, those three games, the two games at home, one at home, the two away, so we kind of have the same experience, so we just, right now, just what I told him, now you're a sophomore experience-wise, so me, me, I'm a junior experience-wise, so, right, so we just need to put it together and just play. Can you guys still win a national championship this year? Yeah, you know, people, you know, we, we see that as number one for a reason, so we're just going to go out there and play, you know, with him and with our fab. We, I think we can make it to the final for him in the final and win the national championship. John Evanson is the tallest guy on staff here, and to see him look up, how tall is he? 6'10", or John. Yeah, Keita. No, Keita. is 6'10". Yeah, I like what he had to say, I like what he had to say there. Yeah, I did too. Still ahead, as we continue here, Brent Axe is coming back to talk more basketball ahead of the Orange debut in the NCAA tournament tomorrow. Welcome back to March into Madness on CBS 5. Having a good time here tonight with March into Madness. Brent X joins us once again, and, and we were chatting uh, during the break about uh, the prospects. You can't get away from the Fab Mellow issue, and Nico, Nico you brought up a good point, and, and yeah. what is that good point? Well, the good point is, you know, last week at the Big East Tournament, I was talking with Cincinnati the day before they played SU. Both Coach McCrone and Yancey Gates, their big guy said, inside, said, they prefer to play Syracuse with a Fab in the lineup. They think Syracuse is better without Fab Mello because they're quicker. What's your answer to that, Brett? I want to know what they're putting in the Skyline Chili. <laughs> I mean, they are quicker, but here's here's the myth that they're better without Fab. Fab creates transition. You put yes, it in the back yes, of the zone. Yes. Like we said, you outlet take more pass. chances on defense, outlet passes. So I think that was some you know good old-fashioned smack talk from Cincinnati. They're trying to get in his head a little bit. Yeah, and even more so, they, and he allows Dion and Trish and Scoop to make That's those it. risky plays or Joseph. And and you, to just, make a steal. you just said a name right there, man. And Bayheim will get mad at me if I say this, but uh, should I say go-to guy? But here you had a Dion Waiters <laughs> who scored 18 and 28 points at the Big East Tournament. And you're going to need him to maintain that level. Right. The margin for error gets so much slimmer for somebody else. So someone's got to be the steady right. influence and the star. Let's face it, stars win tournaments. He's got to step up. He could be, be that it. Guy. And yeah. Joseph needs to wake up too a little bit. I'd he say. does. Yeah. He does. I mean, it, that like was. If to. anything, it's good that they got that out of their system. Joseph and Scoop and their bad play in New York. Yep, so yep. I think he's tournament served right. a purpose this year. All right. Thank you, Brent. Thanks to Matt and thanks to Nico for joining us here on CBS 5. Our coverage continues on the CW6 News at 10 and on NBC3 at CBS 5 at 11. And we have information on True TV at CNY Central. March into Madness on CBS 5. Sponsored by Central New York Chevy dealers and Mark's Pizzeria.